Hello, it's me, French Ted, and we are here for episode number 47, 6, I want to say, one of those. Um, the number doesn't matter, it's LLW Tempest. We are here for one of our biggest shows of the year. I believe Tempest was actually our first ever pay-per-view when we hit small. I think that's when I scheduled them all in. So this is our second uh, Tempest of the series, which is very, very exciting. Um, and yeah, we are here in the pre-show. We've got a stacked card for you guys. We've got one, two, three title matches, which isn't as many as we normally get. We've also got a number one contenders match. Well, technically... We've got two number one contender matches because the main event has that added, um, what's it called, stipulation uh, to it. But yeah, just quickly run down the card before we go into uh, any further details. Sorry, just hit the mic. Don't know if you heard that. Um, we've got PAX Open Challenge that's going to open the show uh, for the London's own championship that Ashton Smith, former King of the Lariat League, has accepted. Uh, we've then got Rina Sawayama's uh, LLW Queen's title on the line against Sapphire Reed. Bobby Guns will be taking on Dan Maloney, the man he's been targeting for weeks. After that, we've got the four-way tag team number one contenders match between Kilted Chaos, New Blood, Brooks and Parker and Sanity. And then we've got the final of the LLW London Siren Championship Tournament where Charlie Evans, the woman who we feel created this title or the reason why it's a thing taking on may sarah who has had this resurgence as of late and then kicking off well, not kicking off um fight finishing the show i don't know what do you say ending the show the, the main event it is our 5v5 falls count anywhere match it's joe anawai's global empire taking on will osprey's syndicate of course, from Faction Warfare, the winning faction uh, in that event got to pick the stipulation. Joanna Y picked the stipulation, which is a false count anywhere. Uh, so, yeah, you would like to think it's in his favour, but who knows? Anything can happen uh, when a match is as chaotic as that. So, yeah, and then the winning, the, the winning faction, um, their leader will become the next number one contender too. That man right there, Drew Galloway's LLW Kings championship um and that was decided by drew himself so we are here that is the show we're gonna see it right now uh we are just shy of thirty thousand people at saint mary stadium uh where we've got drew galloway alex kozlov and william regal being our pre-show team for this uh, as they just talk about the matches that are happening what they're excited for um and yeah everything else so i think we shouldn't waste any more time Let's dive straight into the show as we open with Pack versus Ashton Smith for the LLW London's Own Championship. Remember, London's Own rules will be in effect as they will in the final of the London Siren match. So let's dive straight into this one. 81. I will take that in about the how great wrestling and good heat. Pack defeats Ashton Smith in a London's Own match by two falls to one, meaning that Pack retains and is still. Our London's own champion, and it's defence number six of his current run. And Ashton Smith, you know, came off really strong. He got that early pinfall in the match and kind of held off for as long as he could. But Pack, using his, let's say, heelish tactics, managed to get the upper hand, um, scoring a pinfall and then scoring a second one um, within the dying minutes of the match. Ashton Smith, very disappointed, very upset um you know very kind of kind of angry or like whoa this is a side we haven't seen of him before but post match you know he does the right thing uh ashton smith offers his hand to pack you know good game great match well done uh but pack just kicks his hand to the side and walks off with his belt uh which you know has upset ashton smith a little bit the crowd have booed pack out of the stadium um and that is how the opening match ends ashton smith close to getting another title you know after losing the king's title all that time ago um but pack is just too good at, on this occasion or maybe too smart with his in-ring tactics um but yeah that is the first match done 85 and 81 pretty strong start 
Following on from this though, as you guys are already aware because we ran down the card earlier, we have got the LLW Queens Championship match. It is Rina Sawayama who has been incredibly dominant as Queens Champion offered this opportunity to Sapphire Reed after seeing the amazing, in her words, performances in the uh, LLW London Siren Tournament. Rina says, I don't have a match at Tempest, I would like you to be my opponent. And William Regal said, go for it baby girl. So uh, Sapphire Reed is here with, um, you could say undeserving, but hey ho, you know, if you beat the champion, then it's deserving. A uh, title match against Rina Sawayama. So let's dive straight into this and see what happens. A 75, wow. I, will, I mean, Rina carried this, let's be honest. But wow, a uh, bout that had really good wrestling um, and a decent reaction from the crowd. Rina Sawayama defeats Sapphire Reed in just over 20 minutes with the splash mountain this is defense number seven of her queen's title and yes yeah, she's really making that title her own the trouble is i think we've got quite dominant champions in this uh, series that it's going to be hard to come by you know people taking the belts off them but i think that's what we want we want our titles to feel like something special i don't want to just be passing them around left right and center uh, but yeah rena once again proves why she is so dominant and sapphire puts on a really solid display i think 62 is one of her highest ratings uh well i know that rena's 81 is uh, definitely up there with hers but yeah 75 that did not disappoint i'm very very happy with some post-match you know they shake hands celebrate together rena says you know sapphire reed future of this business um and kind of give sapphire a moment just to soak in the applause from the crowd after this match though we head straight into bobby guns taking on dan maloney so bobby guns for some reason has been targeting Maloney over the past couple of weeks, months or so. Um, just says that he wants to embarrass the kid. He doesn't like him, doesn't like his attitude. Um, thinks that, you know, he's not worth it. And says that, you know, I'm just going to embarrass this kid. I'm going to target him, prove that he's not all that. Uh, Maloney's kind of mostly been on the receiving end of it, but has never backed down. Um, in fact, it's kind of backed up some of his friends. You know, Darius has been targeted, Zilla has been targeted. Um, so, you know, the 0 2 one kind of sticking together in this. So, um, yeah, but we've got one-on-one -on -one action now. Bobby Guns wanted this match. Uh, Dan Maloney provoked the match. And, uh, yeah, here we go. 76. I'll take that about that had superb wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Bobby Guns gets the win. He makes Dan Maloney tap in just under 20 minutes with the Boston Crab. Bobby Guns has been on the run of his lifetime recently. Um, ever since the announcement that Timothy Thatcher was pissing off, Bobby Guns was like, this is my turn to step up and be that non-British European guy, you know, that everyone loves to hate. Uh, Dan Maloney as well, maybe, you know, hard done by in here. You know, in a really strong performance, 78 from Maloney, which is really good for him. Bobby Guns has just become like this in-ring technician and I love it. He's also got really good character work. So, you know, we can see Bobby Guns has got a bright future, as does Dan Maloney. You know, we're not pushing Dan Maloney to the side. Uh, but the driller definitely needs to sort something out. Uh, but a 76, again, really good. I think we're going to end up with a, hopefully, decent showing. Uh, it all depends on the main event. That's all I'm saying. All depends on the main event. Uh, after this, though, I think we dive straight into the four-way match. You know, we're not really promo heavy at the moment. I think it dives straight into the four-way tag team match. So it's Kilted Chaos, Sanity, Brooks and Parker, and New Blood. These were all hand-picked by... William Regal himself uh, saying that, you know, these are the teams that I've been impressed with as of late. You know, they've got the the edge. Uh, they may not have uh, win streaks behind them, some of them, but they've definitely proven that they are competent in the ring. And uh, whoever wins this match is more than deserving of a Knights title match. Of course, New Blood are part of the Anoa'i Global Empire, although aren't really the most committed of the, of the, of the team because they were forced into it due to an added stipulation many months ago. After losing their Knights title to the current champions, Chaz Betts and El Hijo del Fantasma. So I think they would be looking for revenge, but also they need to be careful not to step on the toes of Mr. Anawai himself. But yeah, either way, we've got that four-way match coming up next. Uh, I don't have the highest of hopes for it because a couple of my recent signees haven't been performing that well, but let's see how they do in this one. We'll give them a chance. So yeah, the four-way tag team match is up next, and here it is. A 67, uh, I'll take it, I guess. Uh, dragged at the end, yeah, we put this as our steal the show, because uh, 
no one none of the other matches I, I wanted to risk uh but yeah in about that had good wrestling though and a decent reaction from the crowd new blood got the win oh they defeat brooks and parker killed the chaos and sanity when diamante made drew parker tap with the diamante special hansen was the weak link still stuck in his wwe ways i'm um, struggling to keep up with everyone else looking at the numbers here though let's see who actually was the biggest defenders uh, so chris brooks far ahead of everyone else that kind of makes sense he always crushes it uh, ishin and diamante are close behind so it's nice to see a team similar in their ratings Drew Park is getting better. I love that. 69. Axe Mantisha is getting better as well with a 69. Uh, Damo with a 62. Damo and Hansen are the, the weak links I've noticed in those teams. Uh, Jack Morris, 57. Come on, Jack. I uh, Someone in the comment section was like, I really hope you bring in Jack Morris. And I was like, you know what? I'll give him a go. I don't know much about him. So far, I'm not impressed. But we will give him time because I really like his look. He's like a mini Drew, Drew Galloway. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we've got some tag team bonus uh, bonuses here. Uh, Hansen visibly tired towards the end. Got the crowd buzzing though. Chris Brooks has a hot new move. Cool. Uh, but to just sum it all up, New Blood are our new number one contenders against their own faction team members, Chaz Betts and El Hijo del Fantasmo. So that will be happening, um, I'd say, either in the next couple of weeks or at the next pay-per-view show. So we will have to keep our eyes out for that. Following on from this, though, it is time for, I want to say, our co-main event, because I think it deserves it. It is uh, May Sarah and Charlie Evans in their LLW London Siren final match. Um, but before the match takes place, oh, we've got a backstage segment. Who knew? Who knew? Maybe we were setting things up in the ring for the, the title unveil, because that's what I thought was coming up next. Um, but it's Bobby Guns post-match, just kind of reflecting on his win, you know, saying, another win under my belt. Maybe it's about time that um, I stopped picking on these titleless folk and focus on the ones that have the belts as he lights a little cigarette and heads out the fire exit to have a little smoke. Um, so yeah, Bobby Guns is teasing that he's probably going to start targeting someone with a belt soon. So we'll have to watch that space and find out who that may be. But now... They've got it up, the little tables in the ring, the, the blanket or the cloth is over the title. Let's take a look and see what's happening. It is William Regal, um, you know, unveiling both the title and the final competitors. One of these two women will be walking out with the LLW London Siren Championship. He unveils the title. It's a beautiful one. We've shown it in previous episodes. I will show it at the end of this one as well because I like to do a little... I know I've missed it in previous episodes, but after pay-per-views, I like to go back to the office and just kind of give a rundown of our creative and stuff. Um, but yeah, here we are. May Sarah, Charlie Evans, both getting a good in-person look at the belt. A nice little segment here from William Regal as he unveils and announces the final match of the London Siren Championship, which started off a little bit weak, not going to lie. But as it progressed, it got really, really good. So I'm hoping everything crossed that this main event match is baller so let's not waste any more time let's click next segment and see who comes out as our new and our first llw london's siren champion remember london zone rules are happening in this match no dq 20 minute time limit most pinfalls and submissions walks away with the belt let's go a 78 oh my goodness and about that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd it is may Sarah, Sarah, uh, that defeats Charlie Evans in a London zone match by one fall to nothing. Couldn't be any closer. Uh, May Sarah wins and becomes the first LLW London Siren champion. She said many, many weeks ago, I am sick and tired of losing. I'm sick of being a stepping stone. I'm sick of being a jobber. I will job no more. I am never losing again. And since then, May Sarah has done exactly that. She has not lost a single match in and out of this tournament. And Charlie Evans did incredible work to one, push for this belt to be created and two, make it all the way to the final. I'm sure that there will be championship gold in Charlie Evans' future because she is someone I'm planning on keeping around long term. But congratulations to May 
Sarah as she celebrates with her belt. We've got a few confetti cannons, you know, we pulled the budget up a little bit. And post-match, Soraya Knight Jr.'s music hits. And this isn't the first time that she's interrupted a women's championship win. She comes out and announces that she will be May Sarah's first challenger for the LLW London's Siren Championship, to which May nods her head and agrees. Of course, we did have Soraya Knight debuting and challenging Rina Yamashita, but that never actually happened due to an injury. So it seems like Soraya has kind of realigned her focus and is deciding to challenge May instead. So that match will probably happen soon. And boy, it should be a good one. Soraya Knight Jr. on her day can be very, very good. And of course, it's just another belt that they're trying to feed into the Anawai Global Empire. And speaking of feeding titles into the global empire it is time for our five on five false count anywhere main event if joanna Hawaii or any of his team members can pick up the pinfall victory or submission victory then he becomes number one contender to drew galloway's king's championship and is one step closer to having a literal empire but in his way is Will Ospreay recently debuting and just being a skyrocket to the top of this company. Introducing his syndicate family as well with Lycos, Lycos Jr. and Callum Newman all debuting pretty much alongside him. With the inclusion of Ricky Knight Jr. who is a temporary uh, member of syndicate just to kind of combat the 5v5 side. And of course targeting Colby Carino. But... It was Ricky Knight Jr. who lost Syndicate's advantage for this match when Madoka Kakuta defeated him in the final round of the Faction War Gauntlet. So, you know, there's he probably needs to repay their faith in some way. But let's just forget about all of that. Actually, no, let's keep all of that in mind because we're heading into that main event now. Five on five. Just to quickly confirm, it's Joanna Hawaii, Madoka Kakuta, the right-hand man, the LLW Knights, um, Chaz Betts and El Hijo del Fantasma and Colby Carino taking on Will Ospreay, Callum Newman, Lycos Jim, which is Lycos and Lycos Jr. and Ricky Knight Jr., who is, of course, our LLW Prince's champion. So, yeah, let's not waste any more time. Let's dive straight into our big old Tempest main event. Five on five, Anawaii Global Empire versus Syndicate. Let's go. An 82, okay, I'll take that. You know, there's a lot of varying numbers here. So, yeah, let's just quickly run through it. In a bout that had superb wrestling, so I will take that, my favourite word, and a decent reaction from the crowd, Ricky Knight Jr. and Syndicate and Lycos Glim. I don't, I don't know, Glim, Lycos Jim. I don't know why they separated it up like that. Defeat Colby Carino, Madoka Joe, and, oh, because these are the tag teams, aren't they? Yeah. Um, in a Fool's Count Anywhere match when Will Ospreay piz, pins Chaz Betts with the Oz Cutter. Now, there were some crazy things happening in this match. They all kind of seemed to segregate in a way, um, but strangely, uh, Ricky Knight Jr. wasn't targeting Colby at all in this match. C Ricky Knight Jr. was looking for revenge on Madoka Kakuta after that loss. You know, he feels embarrassed. You know, he's a Prince's champion. He shouldn't be losing one-on-one -on -one matches. Uh, Colby, of course, doing his best to get involved and beat up Ricky Knight Jr. as best he can. But Ricky was kind of just pushing him to the side and focusing solely on Madoka Kakuta. There was a lot of back and forth between Lycos Jim and Betson Phantasma. You know, they're two tag team specialist teams. Um, and Will Ospreay's focus was most, mostly on Joe Anawai, as you would expect. But during this match, Joe Anawai was kind of taking a back seat. Um, when we kind of boil it down to the final few minutes in this 33-minute match, um, Joe Anawai had kind of, not I don't want to say given up, but it looked like he had. You know, he'd been knocked down by Callum Newman. He'd been hit by a chair. He kind of rolled out the ring and just sat on the outside, watching on as everything progressed. Chaz Betts was left alone in the ring. He got double teamed by Lycos Jim. Newman then hit him. And then finally, it was the Oz Cutter. And Chaz Betts, one, two, three. And there was this perfect camera angle that one of our camera guys did of the one, two, three being hit. And they'd angled it so that you could see Osprey pinning Betts. And Joe was just on the outside, sat there looking on. Like, it seems like Joe maybe could have done something but he didn't 
So has he given up? I don't know. But uh, that is how the match ended. It was a chaotic match. Um, and yeah, 82 is a really good score. Let's just quickly look at these numbers, though. So Colby with a 79, which is awesome. He's been baller recently. El Hijo with an 81. He's always great. Chaz with an 80. I'll take that. Madoka with an 81. So Madoka Kakuta. Um, I changed his picture because I wanted him to look a little bit more how he actually looks now. Like he's He looks a little bit cooler now than he does in that previous picture. But he came to me, um, I think it was the day before today. Either, either Sunday week four or the one before. Um, and he's changed his style. So his style before was regular. He's now changed his style to impact. So he's now an impact wrestler, whatever that means. I'm assuming it just means he's a bit more intense. Um, which then made me think, like, oh, maybe his number will go up. And his number has, because he was like a 60-something last week. Now he's an 81. So it's got me thinking the regular style is probably what's hindering some of the guys based on my um, product. Because uh, I think Technician, good score. I think he's a high flyer. He's a luchador. Um, high flying, high flying. Um, yeah, like they've all kind of got a thing. Like none, none of these are really regular. I think, actually, I think Ricky Knight Jr. is regular. And I think Joe's regular. But Joe's a star, so it kind of it makes sense. So I'm going to start like reviewing anyone that gets lackluster scores. Like, for, you know, for example, Damo and um, Hansen. See what their styles are. And maybe see if I can convince them to change them slightly. And maybe that'll improve their scores. Uh, because it's it's apparently, I don't know if this is a one-off, maybe he loves being in Force Count Anywhere matches, but it's done wonders for Kakuta, uh, which is great, because I've got big plans for that boy. Um, but yeah, sorry, gone off a tangent there, but I think it's good to let you guys know that. Uh, so Joe Noe got an 85, of course. Ricky Knight Jr., 78, nice. Lycos Jr., 66. He's a little boy, it's okay. Lycos, 70. Callum Newman, 85. And Will Ospreay, a 90. Of course, the one winning the match gets the best score we've then got all of these greens you know hot new move hot new move great gimmick and yeah that means that not only has syndicate won this faction fight i don't know whether it's over or not we'll have to wait and see uh, but will osprey is now officially the number one contender to drew galloway's llw kings championship and this is how we end the show but we do have a post show uh video that gets uploaded onto our social media and it is just syndicate celebrating together. Um, but Ricky Knight Jr. makes a point of calling out Madoka Kakuta. He says, I haven't forgotten about faction warfare. One on one, I want you and I'm willing to put this belt on the line. So it looks like Ricky Knight Jr. has called out Madoka Kakuta and he wants him one on one um, just to kind of prove that he's a deserving princess champion and that he can defeat Madoka Kakuta. Uh, but of course, this is post-show, doesn't really count towards the score. So let's finish the show now and see how we did. An 81. I love that. I will take it. Awesome, awesome show. Consistent across the board. We got what? 81, 75, 76, 67, but we'll ignore that. 78 from uh, Mesa and Charlie Evans, which is awesome. I'm definitely going to shout both of those out. Um, yeah, can't complain. Really, really great card. Um love that i was afraid that maybe the lack of title matches and stuff would make it a bit less impressive but i'm happy with it and uh, now it's time to make our speech so i think uh it makes sense we go will osprey uh great performance and then i'm just gonna give both may and charlie a hug because i think they deserve it um and they did really well actually let's swap these two i know it sounds silly but i like to end on you know a more deserving person but yeah will osprey is pleased Charlie is pleased, and there is our new LLW London Siren Champion. We're going to cut it here, and we're going to jump back to the office, where we'll just take a quick look at the titles, look at their prestige. We'll also take a quick look at our creative, and then I think we'll wrap this one up. So I'll see you guys in a sec. Okay, we are back in the office now, and there's a few things I've noticed that I just want to bring up, but I'll bring them up after we look at what we're currently looking at. The reason why we're in the diary is I don't want to spoil anything that's in my assistant section. <laughs> but um, just looking at the money, uh, last month we made 203,000. This one show alone, if we do nothing for the rest of the month, we've made 209. Look at those ticket sales. Oh, look at those ticket sales. My boy. And also our um, merchandise is jumping up as well. So that's really, really good to see. 
Uh, workers cost is quite big so i imagine this is going to probably go down a little bit as uh, we've got two shows left in no four shows left in this month what am i on about so yeah that'll probably go down a little bit remember in march we had oh no we didn't have two pay-per-views we only had the one i don't remember we're gonna have to take a look now uh show history uh march march march, march, march. when was that that was week three february okay yeah so we just had the one in march which was this at the o2 so we've gone from the o2 to the o2 to st mary stadium which i guess is bigger because there's attendance was 29 and what was this 17 20 000 sellout oh wow so yeah we're we're bigger than the o2 arena now love that um and you can see here we had uh 315 000 viewers um and it was shown on youtube yeah nice 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 Let's just quickly take a look at titles and creative. So we'll start in titles. We've got our king, uh, Drew Galloway. We need to get that prestige up. It will slowly grow. Um, it's just like we, they started low when we created them back in day. Uh, our knights are still Chaz Betts and El Hijo. Our London's own champion is Pac. Let's see what the prestige on this is like. Uh, it's slowly growing. Uh, prestige doesn't matter too much. I mean, this is high because when I created it, I accidentally set it as a main event belt um but you know but let's keep it at that look at that beautiful design mesa are our first champion our prince ricky knight jr um who you know won in the ladder match wasn't it it was a ladder match right B -b 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 -b. yeah ladder match yeah uh, but he's looking to target madoka kakuta and then we've got our queen oh but the new design i can't remember if i showed this i redid the queen's design because i didn't like the old one um, Rini Yamashita, who's been the champion since uh, August 2025. So yeah, she's been here 207 days. Uh, we've got 90 days, one day, 90 days, 90 days, <laughs> 141 days. So yeah, currently our longest reigning is our queen. Jumping into creative, uh, franchise players, it's just these two because uh, the way that franchise players work is I think their overall popularity, their average pop, needs to be higher than the company's pop or something like that or on par so it's just these two at the moment but we've obviously got a bunch of big players madoka kakuta is apparently going to be um one of our biggest stars so yeah i'm going to keep pushing that boy hot prospects shun skywalker still about we're going to use him sporadically mesa are you know we've got some young people here that can definitely uh, stick around for a while talk the talk doesn't really matter to you it's just people that are good on the mic showstoppers kakuta's up there already I guess changing his um, wrestling style has paid off. Osprey, Pac, Shun, Callum Newman kind of makes sense. Ring generals are kind of the same, but with uh, guns and bets coming in. Who's hot? Pack. Yep, he's been winning non-stop. The same with Galloway. The same with guns. Ricky Knight Jr. is interesting. I wouldn't, I'm a little bit surprised he's there. The same with El Hijo as well, although he did pick up a big win uh, against Will Osprey in Faction Warfare thankfully we've got no one in who's not i hate it when people are here if someone drops in here you can guarantee they're getting a win the next week um and then hidden gems this hasn't changed for the longest time ever and i've got no interest in signing any of these i think i actually had zan phoenix for like a week uh yeah and then i just got rid of her sorry zan uh but yeah the thing i wanted to show you guys is um last time i think we looked at this we were 16th in the world it, we're now 13th so let's quickly jump to the federations let's order it by size and there we are we're now above new japan of america we are now above uh triple a and tokyo joshi pro wrestling i think we were on par with all japan all japan who have zack saver jr on an exclusive written which is so annoying and uh, one year three months oh i just want i want this boy but I'm gonna have to wait but yeah let's see who we're creeping up behind so ddt we're just behind i reckon we can leapfrog those soon uh pro wrestling no are the same dragon gate i'm not really worried about these people to be fair stardom are putting in some good uh matches it, i think it's when we get up here i don't know why game changer wrestling is up here it must be something to do with like uh, the momentum or something i don't know um but yeah i think we can we can jump up to these uh cml have finally started making money again well done to them uh, Ring of Honor, yeah, Impact, I've got 11 million in the bank. My goodness, New Japan 38, 54, and then 767 million. My goodness, my goodness, what's our prestige and momentum? Uh, 82, 79, yo, we're killing it. We're killing it. Look at that. Look at this roster. I don't think there's any spoilers. I mean, I think I already told you guys that Akira Tozawa um, was hired 
But yeah, I brought in Akira. What is this Dragon Gate in LLW? What's this? What is this? I've adopted a hostile attitude. What? Why? I, I never got told about this. Oh well, I don't really care. Um, but yeah, cool. let's do it in money. Is there any companies we can buy out? Because I just really enjoy doing that. Alright, so we ignore these. Um, can we try and buy these people out? The Pro Wrestling Australia Black Label. They got anyone interesting? Mikey Nichols, I quite like him. Caveman Ugg. I mean, he looks pretty cool. Should we try it? Let's try it, why not? It's two grand. I'm assuming we can't. Oh, okay. That's only gonna wait, is that only gonna cost us two grand? Takeover means company remains active with its current roster. They are now owned by you. If you want to turn them into developmental. Mm, pillage. Disband. I think we should pillage. Who can we who can we take? Who looks cool here? I don't know why I'm doing this. They got a pretty big roster to be fair. There's no way to like um what's it called? Sort. So I mean we saw that Caveman Ugg was at the top. Kinda yeah, I might as well just sign him and if not I can always get rid of him. Uh let's see. Adam Brooks, I recognise Candy Lee. Danny Psycho, what does he look like? Oh, he looks a bit stupid. Dahlia Black sounds familiar. Um I've never had her before. What's her stats like? Uh no. Uh, let's keep going. Emmanuel, one of my favourite films. Oh, no, not the... Uh, I'm joking, not the kind of, <laughs> It's not one of my favourite films. I want to make that very clear. Um, Gore, that's a cool name. Uh, it's like a bad cane. Although, his numbers aren't terrible. Uh, but he's not known in the UK at all. Also, can we even sign half these people? Because, of course, they're... Um, oh, Madison Eagles. Is she like a road agent? road agent yeah i think she could be a good road agent yeah we'll pillage her because sometimes we get the note saying that our road agents are being overused mikey nichols um uh, my least favorite of the two but i do like mikey nichols he could be worth signing probably not i think it might just be these two xena is she the one that used to be in no she's not don't worry Tommy Phillip. I'm just, I'm just looking. I'm sorry about this, guys. Uh, actually, let's just stop here. Let's just look at one more person around. Rat Daddy. Oh, look at him. Personal info. With AJ Istria as Death Squad. He's got not terrible, but it's not worth signing. Yeah, I think we'll bring in Caveman Ugg just because he's apparently the best guy. What were his stats saying? He just looks kind of cool. Oh, he's got great stats. Oh, we're bringing him in. We're bringing him in a straight away. We're going to get that up. And yeah, he's going to be fun. Has he got a team? Sid Parker as prehistoric death cult. Why does that sound cool? Is Sid Parker here? Stevie. Sid Parker. What does he look like? Oh, okay. He doesn't look as interesting. But he's got okay basics. Um, we'll bring him in. Why not? He's probably going to cost us nothing. So there we go. Uh, we'll take those. Titles. I feel like we should take the soul of PWA. What's that? Um, I kind of is it. I want to take one as like a heritage belt, but I'll rename it like the PWA Heritage Belt or something. I don't know. PWA Premiership. We'll take the PWA Heavyweight as well. Yeah. Does it keep them highlighted? Yeah, it does. Uh, TV shows. Training facilities. Damn it. Broadcasters. Damn it. Let's just do that. Pillage. Boom. They're gone. Aha. <laughs> okay. What, what else we got? Can we take anyone else? No. Okay. Stev it all. Which which Fatu brother is this? Uh, which one is this? I think this is Jimmy. Yes, yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy's Jimmy's the worst one. I'm not interested in Jimmy. If it was Jay, that's another story. Um, but yeah, cool. Let's just jump back to the office. Oh, I hope you guys didn't see that. Although you're now gonna all rewind. Uh, but let's go titles. What? Where's the title? We pillaged it. Does it be like any status? PWA heavyweight. Yeah, let's uh, unretire. We're going to call it the PWA heritage. Sure. 
save. And there we go, we've got a new title, the PWA Heritage, why not? This channel is a true benchmark of PWA. Um, and now it's ours. And then if we go roster, where's a good old caveman? He's face. Um, we'll need to add the tag team. Let's do that live as well now. Uh, add team. Come on. There we go. Prehistoric death cult. Caveman Ugg and Sid Parker. Individuals. Add team. Um, and there they are. I'm going to need to look for a new Sid Parker picture because I cannot take that boy seriously. Does he have all red? Let's have a look. Sid. No. Cool. I will source one because, yeah, I'm not having that. <laughs> and yeah, that is the uh, end of this one, guys. I'll leave that here. Um, actually, let's leave it just looking at our new belt. We have a new championship, the PWA Heritage. Why it's called actually the Heritage Heavyweight? No. We'll leave it as this, the PWA Heritage, because just to remember our fallen soldiers of uh, PWA Australia. And I'm kind of wishing we did the same with RevPro when we bought that out. So I might... Um, we bought out Beyond as well, didn't we? We bought out quite a lot. I don't want to add more belts. We'll just, this can just be the, the Heritage belt. Um, but yeah, I'm going to stop talking now. That's the end of this one, guys. Thank you very much. Sorry for this tangent, but, you know, you can't not try and buy a company out it's just fun and let's just quickly check our numbers uh yeah i don't think it's really gone down at all i think we literally spent two thousand dollars on this company which is amazing <laughs> um yeah i'm gonna end it here thank you for watching uh next episode is going to be the fallout of uh, everything that happened in this one so i'm very excited to book that and see where we can go but uh yeah please like comment subscribe share and I will see each and every one of you in the next one.